Excuse me, I've got a piece of chocolate that I didn't expect to have uh, still got in my mouth when I started. Um, I hope you're well. It's been a while since I've done one of these. So I thought I'd just jump back in and see what happens. Um, I've got plenty of uh, plenty of opportunity to do some more um, live improvised music, so we can jump on some of that. Uh, I'm also working on some 3D graphics. Uh, which are supposed to make the stream look a little bit better when they're done. Uh, so I'm sort of halfway through uh, the first part of, of that kind of work. Um, I use 3D Studio Max, and I'm, uh, I'm basically building the space station. So that, that's kind of fun. I, I've always enjoyed using that, uh, and it, I don't get much of a chance to, to do it anymore in uh, my, either my day job or any freelancing, so just jumping back in and, and trying to get my head around some of the tools is, uh, yeah, it's kind of okay. Uh, if there's anybody in the chat, please uh, say hello and uh, give me a, an indication that you're around and I'll, I'll catch up with you. You tell me what you're up to and uh, we'll go from there. So that's, that's the sort of state of play, uh, a little bit of music, a little bit of graphics, and I'll, I'll sort of carry on where I was before I started the stream. And we'll have a look at that now. So I am on with this. I started off with an image from uh, Stable Diffusion. And this is like a, a mock-up of the modules for the space station that we're currently drifting around in, around uh, Jupiter. Uh, as I say, Jupiter in the background there. Just slowly spinning round and I wanted to to do something in in the way of a a 3D sort of model at, that I can then import into Unreal Engine because I've I've got the basics of Unreal Engine under my belt. Um I know how to import models, apply a few basic materials and and do basic animations with them, but I'm not very good yet. <clears throat> so the the more I can learn and the more I can showcase what I'm learning as I do it, I think probably the the more fun it will be for me and for, for anybody else who's interested. Um, so the current state of play, as I say, is I've got this rough mock-up. Everything's just cylinders and um, rectangles and cuboids and things like that. And then I started taking a couple of little modules and then developing them a bit further. This is kind of something called hard surface modeling, which I learned a fair bit about. Uh, I've, I've taught myself all of this um, and then used 3D Studio in my day job. So I've had a, a fair bit of practice with it. And I also managed to do some freelancing a few years ago, uh, like interiors of offices and commercial properties. So. I've, I've sort of battle tested my abilities a little bit, um, but nothing in the way of um, animations or fantasy, fantasy environments. Everything's always been sort of commercial stuff. So not, not quite so much fun as, as uh, doing a space station anyway. I'll, I'll talk through what I'm doing as I do it. And if it's of interest, great. Leave a, leave a, a comment or ask questions and... I'll, yeah, I'll just keep going with it. Uh, ah, we've got one person in uh, viewing at the minute, so give me a shout in, in the chat if you would. Say hello. Uh, I'm just going to jump on with this, really. So the the whole process here is to, to sort of take one of these little modules and, and dig into it, and I'm literally just making up details off the top of my head as I do this. 
this is going to give me a few opportunities to to sort of liven things up. Hey, Wabbit. Uh, yeah, building a ship. Um, the 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 sort of where are we? One second here. The space station around me is is all uh, just photo bashed. So this interior here is is not from a 3D. But what I really want to do is put it into Unreal Engine uh, and actually make it so that it, it is all 3D and uh, it could be sort of viewed from different angles with with like dynamic lighting and stuff like that. So that's that's the kind of logic that I'm following here. So if I can then sort of build up, let's say this is the module that I'm sat inside. If I could then sort of model that up and light it from the inside, that would be sort of fun, I think. Uh, and then, yeah, as I say, just taking it mod model at a time. And the the whole process is to to sort of sort of work on little bits here and there this is polygon modeling I, I don't know how familiar you are with this kind of thing but basically you you, you sort of take uh, small segments and and make it as as basic as you can and then you apply modifiers to to sort of develop it further so i've taken like a quarter of a uh, like a command module from Apollo style shape, S put a symmetry modifier on that so that it turns from a quarter into a half, and then a symmetry mod module again to go from a half to a whole, and then something called Turbo Smooth, which which sort of refines the geometry and adds more uh, more vertices to smooth it all out. Um, this this is very much like Blender, yes, Wab Wabbit. Um, I learned 3D Studio Max to a basic level like 15, 20 odd years ago when it was in, in its infancy, when some of the earlier versions. Blender wasn't even a thing then. Uh, Blender, I think, probably started to become usable and, and popular maybe about 10 years ago. And I always said to myself, I need to learn Blender because it's free and it's actually really, really good. But making the jump from one bit of software to another I've often found is a lot more difficult than just learning the first one from scratch because you you kind of as you pick up the new bit of software you're like I want to do the job I want to, I want to actually build something so as you as you start doing it you get frustrated that you can't just do what you knew knew how to do in the first place so um but yeah one one day maybe I'll kick myself into action and try and learn blender uh so I will probably throw a few more bits and pieces onto this as we go uh if you've come around for for music i've got all the gear set up and i can jump on and do that i thought while it was quiet i'd probably start doing the um i'd probably start doing the 3d but this is all this is all up and running and should be audible when the time comes so give me a shout if you want to hear some music and i'll i'll either jam away or i'll i'll answer questions that if i've got uh, questions uh, coming in or I'll I'll sort of just jam away if people want to hear music so it's all good um, for the moment though yeah I'll I'll do a little bit on here uh, that was a question I think oh do you do you yes I'll do me then for a bit uh, so how have you been Wabbit I've, I've seen your uh, channels getting quite a lot of traction you're doing uh, some fun things with new bits of kit here and there Uh, let me jump back into this. I think I might actually try and put like a, um, some handles on the side there. Trying to play more and talk less. <laughs> I, I'm trying to do the opposite sometimes. Uh, I find I find when I get either home from work and I want to to sort of do something to uh, to help push my channel forward or or make some music. I, I default to just jumping on my hardware gear and making music because I've got a workflow and it's like frictionless. Whereas if, if I want to sit down and do something like this, I really have to think through what kind of content am I producing? Uh, have I got anything in the back of my head that I, I know I can talk about for a 20 minutes, half an hour? Or have I got a script that I can read through and, and sort of work on that? Uh, and more often than not at the minute, I'm, I'm finding that 
more challenging. Um, I think it's because I've got ambitions to to do certain things and starting those off is is probably more difficult than it is just to to actually get on and um, and, and really dig into them once I've got them started. So uh, I am trying to just create a new element to this. In fact, rather than do it that way, I'm going to start a new object and then attach it afterwards. So I'll take a uh, a box. I'm making a faff of this already. Uh, so I tend to start off with just like a, a cuboid. Uh, turn it into what's called an editable poly object, which means that you can then stretch it and do whatever the hell you want with it. Uh, I'll go back to local so that my control surfaces are working in line with the object itself. Glad life is good. Uh, and then we'll extrude this somewhat at each end. As with any bit of software, if you're you're trying to do something constructive with it, if you can learn shortcut keys, that's often the way forward. And with 3D Studio, I've I've got a certain amount of shortcut keys up my sleeve. but not all of them by any stretch. Uh, if I pick my number keys, I can jump between these parts of the object, so either vertices or edges or whatever. Uh, world. So we're going to create like a handle to the outside of the, the command module. Again, I probably should have used the symmetry modifier on this just to make it more regular. But I'm, I'm starting to think that the rougher I make this, the, the more fun it might be rather than it all being super precise. I mean, it's one thing to have a space module, but it could be kind of fun if it's a bit ramshackle. Uh, so that'll do that. And then if I do... A turbo smooth on this when you do your 3d modeling work do you like to work in silence have music playing um i'd probably i'd like to have music playing usually this this is it's a it's a really nice thing that you've asked that question because that that falls into the the next video that i would like to make and i'm i'm still sort of trying to get my head around the the process of recording that and that is talking about flow states so the the whole thought that i've got about flow states which are are sort of those mindsets that you have when you're you're working at your highest performance level um is that you you have to have a certain amount of practice and experience under your belt at a certain task before you can really sort of start to flow because it's not it's not that kind of mindless activity of, I know how to do this task, it's boring, there's no challenge involved, I can just do it and switch my head off. It's the kind of sort of high intensity focus that you're constantly working towards and going through a process, but you know that process inside out. So you can focus entirely, I feel, on the end result and... I'm I'm sort of at that level with 3D. I d I don't know I don't know how to do it inside out, but I know enough that I can really focus on the end result that I'm working on. So uh so yeah, I I would probably ideally if it was just me and not not being on stream, uh I would probably have music playing, but I'll be honest, I've not got my streaming set up 100% just yet. Uh, I sort of jumped on straight on, straight on as I got home from work. Uh, I noticed you were working on that handle while responding to the question. Clearly, have strong working knowledge to multitask. Yeah, I, as I say, I've I've only got a pretty basic set of under uh, tools that I know how to use in 3D Studio, but I know those ones quite well, and I've got all the shortcut keys set up for them. So. Yeah. The other thing is, 
I enjoy working in it. And that I think is the key. You, you have to, if you want to get really good at anything, I think you have to love doing it. it it's one thing to, to sort of say, I'm going to push myself to learn this. But if it's a grind the whole time, then it's, it's no fun. Multitasking, I don't think is is particularly my strong suit in any way, shape, or form. But uh, do I want that at an angle? I think I probably do. Yeah. See, if I, I then, I'm going to align this and find that it's in the wrong place. Um, so I pick that module there again, go back through all my modifiers so that everything's turned off. Yes. Okay. So I can add that into this part. So I can then take this, go back to here and then I can do attach and pick that. So that is now part of this item and then Let's do another one of those. So I'll pick element and kind of want that in. Yeah, I can use worldview. Bring that over to here and adjust it slightly. It's all a bit wonky. And as usual, the cat wants to come in. Just give me one sec. She's uh, she's trying to get into the airlock. Uh, okay, we're back. I'll do. And now I put that turbo smooth on there. That adds more vertices and everything, but it rounds all this lot out quite a lot. So what I need to do is restructure some of this geometry here. Uh, let's pick these vertices. We'll connect twice and so the mo the more you kind of add what are called control vertices, the more it sort of refines the shape and allows the the smoothing, which is adding more detail to the geometry, allows it to to kind of retain its structure. So we'll do connect again. there we go. That's looking all right. Um, how much is being perfect? Imp uh, how much is being perfect important in three D modeling? It, it depends entirely what you're doing it for. If you're doing um, stuff that's artistic and aesthetic only it really doesn't matter as long as it looks good. And that's the kind of level that I've often worked at because the projects that I've worked for, uh, I worked it on have either been for my own pleasure or they've been like conceptual visualizations of things like office interiors and stuff like that. So there, there's a certain amount of geometry that you have to get right, like ceiling heights and uh, walls and, and door sizes and stuff like that. But that kind of stuff's pretty easy uh, once you've got the basics down. Um, if somebody asked me to create a, a sort of geometrically accurate version of a, a human being, that's a hell of a different story. That's, that's pretty difficult and higher than, than sort of my skill ceiling. But if you're, if you're kind of... Um, doing stuff for fun or whatever, then that that doesn't matter too much. Um, you can you can model to to sort of high levels of detail and high levels of of accuracy if you know what you're doing. That's not so much where I've been. Uh, I've 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 got stuff to a certain level of accuracy, but after that, I, it's not never been needed. 
Um, I will see if I can get some of my background music on here while I think of it. Uh, uh, so just give me a second here. Okay, so that should play a little bit of my background music. Give me a shout if the levels are a bit wrong, please. Because I've not really tested that. And would you have or have you 3D modeled a synth or music piece of gear? That's a really good question, actually. I've not done that before, no. I, could, I certainly could, and might, I might actually do that now that you suggest it. I, I have actually noticed that Behringer tend to do quite a lot of that stuff for their marketing and their promo. Um, in fact, they've, they've had a bit of flack for it in the past, if I remember rightly. They've sort of said, here's our brand new synth that will be coming out really soon, and it's a 3D model, and they're, they're just like testing the waters. They've not actually done any development at all. So. Um, but yeah, it, it could be sort of fun. And I, I've always quite liked it when uh, in there, uh, not bearing it necessarily, but in, in some some of the synth designers uh, marketing, they, they take a plug-in, like a, a software VST, and then they'll do a 3D model of, of the interface of that and make it all extruded so it looks like a, a physical synth when it's actually just a VST. So that, that's kind of fun. Uh, maybe a bit misleading, but there we go. And... I'm just thinking about, I've done exactly what I often do, which is I've modeled that to a higher level and then I've got a duplicate over there that I can just bin off and I can just copy the first one. So element. So let's take that. Uh, let's do that by screen. This is going to be all over the show because I've not got my, uh, I've not got my reference angles right just yet. Screen, there we go. So here we go. So you can see that's that's duplicating around to the other parts of the module, which is kind of fun. Uh, okay. So I, I want to put a couple more features on here. Maybe we have some sort of antenna type thing coming off the top of the module. I keep doing that. Let's go back to there. And we'll create a cylinder. This will just be a nice antenna. I want that 180 degrees. I'll have it coming off of there somewhere. Okay. So, um, Wabbit, do you tend to uh, just jump online every couple of days when you finish work, or, or are you a freelancer, or what? How does that work for you? Because you've explained in your videos that you're not like a professional YouTuber, but you're keen. So be interesting to know how you tackle it. Go with eight.
just kind of making this up as I go, really. Uh, I think the more kind of like spindly bits and uh, greebles and, and stuff like that on here, the better. Work from home. If there is downtime, I pop into YouTube after work or before I start is when I mess around to make videos and just jam and not upload. That sounds really good. I, I actually have... I actually have quite a, a few days a week that I can work from home too. Uh, I'm pretty fortunate. I, I tend to do like two days a week in the office, uh, sometimes three. The The thing that prevents me from just jumping straight online often is uh, is family time and helping everybody else get ready for work and stuff like that. But I'm pretty lucky in the evenings I can do a bunch. So... So let's do editable poly again, and we'll attach these two jobbies there. Mm. So if I then go back to here, So we can attach those. Mm, that looks a bit strange. I tend to wake, awaken at 3 a.m. Wow. God, that's an early start. <laughs> I thought I was pretty good at waking up at like quarter to six most days. So again, I'm just putting control vertices on here. And I want that on edge. Yeah, I've I've always been um, keen on doing my own sort of hobbies and stuff like that. And it was only in maybe the last sort of 10 years or so that I, I really kind of got disciplined with my my kind of self-imposed time for getting up. I, I never really sort of got up early for work. I, I would normally just kind of like sneak out the house the latest opportunity I could to get to work on time. Um, but yeah, for the last 10 years or so, I've, I've been around other people that are all early risers. And I've just found that it means that I can beat the traffic if I do have to go into work. And I just, I tend to get up same time, even if I'm off uh, weekends. So I can, I can understand the, I can understand the early start, but 3am, wow, yeah. So I'm just defining these ends of these elements here. It should help this to work out. And I think, right. Yeah, that's curving round because it's attaching to the, the uh, duplicates. Let's take those. Mm. I think I've found this bit up already. It, 
only been working from home for 10 years. Prior to that was a nurse in hospital, work nights. The older I get, I want to enjoy the awake time as much as possible before the permanent space launch. <laughs> yeah, it, it does put it in perspective when when you hit milestone birthdays. Uh, I've just had one, so I can sort of relate. Right, I've buggered that up, so I'm going to delete that. That's better. That's kind of what I was after. 52 here. Every day feels like a milestone. Uh, 40. Uh, no, it wasn't really a milestone. It felt like it, though. It was a bit of a shock. 47 um, in March. So still got a ways to go. All right. I kind of want something else between those windows. I I do enjoy it, actually. I it's funny, actually, the older I get, the happier I get, generally speaking, as life goes on. I, I just kind of feel like I'm getting happier in myself, more confident, more comfortable with things. So, yeah, take it as it comes these days. Uh, turn those off. Now, there is a way of actually creating something on the surface of another object, and I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Mm. I'm waiting for science to uh, to create a restore button that we can push on those days when the body is beat down. Yeah, that's, that, that would be great. I've, I've taken matters into my own hands in the last sort of two weeks. I've, I spent... I spent the last couple of weeks really starting to get back into the gym. I used to be really fit. I did like three days, uh, three days a week um, training karate. And then about probably about seven, eight years ago, I slipped in class on, on uh, training on a wood floor. Everybody was really sweaty because it was like middle of summer. I slipped and I put my arm down and basically it jarred everything in my shoulder and it took like a year to really get back to that uh, back to even anything like close to normal uh what style of martial arts i did um well when i when i was a teenager i started judo and i did that for about five or six years and i got to uh junior blue belt level and to a point where because i was like five foot seven five foot eight whatever um at the age of about 15 they said i'll oh, go and train with the adults so i was like right okay went into the adult class and there's all these six foot two policemen built like tanks and they saw a guy who was as tall as them a lot of them uh so they just picked me up and threw me across the room because I, I weighed next to nothing at that stage um and I, I had a few sort of bumps and bruises in that. Uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed judo. And although I wasn't actually competitive, I, I enjoyed the physicality and the, the stuff that I was learning and the technique side of it. Um, but yeah, I stopped around the time of, of sort of serious uh, uh, grades do, doing, um, I'm, I'm losing my words, uh, school uh, school assessments and things like that GCSEs we call them over here and then I never really went back to it after I finished college I was with a few mates and we went to watch uh, the Shaolin monks uh, let me just flip back to here because I'm nattering away went back to uh, went to see the Shaolin monks and I'm going to turn my camera up a little bit There we go. Um, so the Shaolin monks do a stage show, which was amazing, like all these demonstrations of, of flips and uh, uh, sort of mock fights and all the physical feats that they do. And I said to my mates, I actually really fancy going off and doing some martial arts again. And I thought, I don't fancy judo because 
it doesn't have any striking in it, obviously. And I, I sort of felt like I wanted to try something that was a bit different. So I looked around and there was a karate class um, in the local gym. And within about 20 minutes of watching that, I was hooked. It's like, I've, I'm, fa- I'm really keen to go and, and try that out. And I ended up staying. And that club I stayed with for like 10 years or so. And I got to I got to showdown level. Uh, that's like um, first first degree black belt, and I absolutely love it. I, I still still do love it, although I don't train there anymore. Um, it's Shitoriu Karate, which is what I did, and I ended up um, I ended up actually getting a basic instructor grade called Shidoin Ho. And I ran a club for like five or six adults and probably 10, 12 kids. And it, it, was, it was sort of just because the family stuff came around and uh, not having enough time that I, I sort of said, right, I can't carry on doing the classes, teaching the classes. And then I ended up uh, getting really interested in researching the practical applications of a lot of the, the kata, the techniques. So that that became like an obsession and i i did a lot of study of that and got in touch with uh, it, i was really fortunate actually I, I got in touch with a guy over the internet who was talking about all this kind of stuff and seemed to know quite a lot and he sort of said well if you can book a sports hall i'll come along and i'll show you some of the stuff that i know so i did that and it turned out he was an absolute fucking guru <laughs> he really knew a lot or still still does know a lot um, and he, he sort of put me in touch with an organization that uh, is run by a guy called Patrick McCarthy. And that, that it's, it's like really practical usage of, of karate, where there's a lot of clubs around and a lot of organizations that teach martial arts that have their own sort of uh, training routines. And they, they, they know all these kata that are handed down, which are these like um, routines but they don't actually know the reasoning behind the movements in the kata. This guy knew all that stuff and understood all the principles behind it and everything. And so I, I just hit a gold mine when I, I met this guy, uh, Ben. So that was really cool. Uh, and then, yeah, as I say, about six, seven years ago, I, I got an injury and life was just really busy. So did Tang Sudo... Uh, that's one that I've heard of, but I don't know very much about. If I remember rightly, is that Korean by origin? And is it like sort of a bit jujitsu with lots of sort of joint manipulation and stuff? I could be way off base, but okay. Yeah, so I, I, I only really trained in judo and karate, but I read up on a bunch of other stuff. So cool. Yeah, a, a lot of that stuff is really fun. And I, I've got loads of benefit from it, not just from the physical point of view, but also just the, the discipline of learning something and practicing something. Uh, again, this is another thing that one day I'll, I'll find, the, find the thread that I can put into a video about the, the benefits I've had of sort of focusing on something and, and saying... I'm going to do 100 repetitions of this to get good at it and because it's enjoyable just to to keep repeating and learning something so that it becomes automatic. That's a little bit like the the sort of live performance and improvisation. There's a bit of cross don't don't get me wrong I'm not a fighter. I don't I couldn't go toe to toe with anybody in a ring particularly, but there's a bit of discipline behind the idea of improvising music in the same way as there is in improvising in a combat situation where, or not combat situation necessarily, but a, um, uh, let's say, a, a fight situation in, in a ring where you, you've got to think on the fly and apply skills that you've drilled time and time and time again. So Good for me to get back in to stay away from the BS of social media and the cackles of human complaining. Yeah, it's it's easy to get dragged into that. Um, I do find that uh, I go I go in waves of of being comfortable with reading all the posts and watching all the the videos about 
the the latest complaints that everybody's got and then other times i'm like oh i've got to stop doing this and shut it all out uh, it becomes a bit monotonous when you hear uh, the the one i've got at the minute is my youtube feed my my sort of recommended section is talking about how uh having 500 subscribers changed my life on youtube i've seen a, at least three videos with that same sort of title i i get that if you want to get good at doing youtube they recommend you you kind of copy what other people do because there's a bit of a formula um and you you can learn by duplicating other people's work but jesus that algorithm needs some work <laughs> uh, so let's connect a couple of elements there again this is going to be just like some kind of surface detail Shit. did that wrong um the space capsule is a good place yeah it's that <laughs> that there's a bit of a a sort of family story or not family story but a personal story behind the whole idea of the the space capsule um my mom has always said that she thinks i'm in outer space all the time and i have to say the wife agrees so i figured if it's that obvious then why not capitalize on it a little bit I'm just trying to work out where I want this to go. Maybe over here-ish. Yeah, let's get in there. Okay. Let's see what happens when we turn that smoothing on. That sort of looks all right. Maybe we'll move on to another module, just add a little bit of interest to something else. Uh, solar panels, we're going to need a lot of them. And appear to have a few more people in the uh, the stream. So if, if you're around, say hello. Stick a message in the chat. Are there any devices that allow you to manually manipulate in the 3D modeling versus keyboard or mouse? Yeah, uh, there's... Uh, what's it called? I think there's something called a, a space mouse, which... Uh, I, in fact, I'll Google that while I'm, uh, where are we? 3D mouse. Yeah. So you've got, you've got something like this and this, this central module here, you can like, um, you can like pull it, pull it up, twist it. Maybe you can even tip it or whatever. I, I don't know, but that would allow you to sort of rotate and, and stuff in uh, in different axes. And then, of, of course, you've got like extra sort of functions 
that you can leap onto with the, the sides of your hands. Um, I've never actually used one of those. I mean, at that sort of price, that's that's a bit of an investment. Um, but that, that would be pretty cool. Oops. I mean, the way forward would obviously be uh, uh, working in, in VR. <laughs> Haptic feedback. Um, yeah, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. You sort of work in, work in VR with haptic feedback and then you could, you'd you squash things and maybe they got different uh, levels of resistance depending on the materials that you've applied to them. That would be kind of fun. Um, I'll do a few more minutes of this and then maybe I'll do some live jamming with uh, the music gear because I've not really not really played much recently. Uh, Let's take these items. And we can extrude these out. My scales all to, to cock, it's not... I should have set it up thinking in meters and then everything, but what I, uh, as you were saying earlier, Wabbit, it's it's a case of how accurate does it need to be. In this case, it doesn't need to be accurate at all. So I just uh, worked on whatever the default scale was, and I figured that I would probably um, just resize everything with reference to a human figure at the end of it so that it, it all kind of looks a little bit better. But yeah, for the minute, it's just rough and ready. Uh, uh. I don't think I want to do anything particularly more with those. Maybe just some some structure to join them to the module. Uh, what I will do though is align it so they can join that properly. Um, create a box. So as you can probably tell, one of my one of my shortcomings is that I flit around and do too many different things. I should probably stick to music on this channel and then do another one for things like three D. But I don't know. I'm sort of thinking that I just enjoy doing whatever I do. So if other people like it, then great. If not. Oh well. Oh, what's wrong? Because YouTube seems to love ha having consistency, not just in terms of how often you post stuff, but also in terms of what kind of content you're producing. Gossamer, hey, thanks for joining. If your channel is branded specific to a thing, that might work, but since it's a you channel, you can do different things. I'm I'm glad it comes across that way, thanks, um, because, yeah, I mean, when I first started out on this channel, I, I tried to do a few tutorials, and I found that they actually got a decent amount of traction. And then I got to a point where I was thinking, well, I've kind of explained the things that I was keen to explain that I didn't see anybody else talking about. And I was like, well, I could do tutorials that cover stuff that other people have covered, but what would be the point of that? Um, they also have a higher click, uh, click per meal, is it? Uh, like click per thousand views. Yeah, I'm I'm just as I say, doing whatever I feel like doing and if it appeals great. Um th Gossamer, thanks for your comment about the the flow state um 
post that I put up. I, I agree with you completely. And I hope that the message I put out made sense because what I was thinking was my understanding of flow states, and correct me if I am wrong, my understanding of flow states is that it, it isn't the sort of mindless thing like if I'm driving to work and I've been been there every day for the last six, seven years, I switch my brain off and halfway through the journey I get there and I wasn't even thinking. Uh, halfway through the journey I, I go through a bunch of junctions that I didn't even think about and I've forgotten um, where I was up to. It's more that you need to have massive amounts of practice so that as as I'm sort of doing with the 3D, I can, I can talk while I'm doing it, um, but more I can focus on the end result rather than the... Uh, focus on the end result rather than every individual manipulation of the objects and every individual part of the task that I'm doing. So that that's what I was getting at. There's there's this sort of level of mastery of something where you can do it and have your brain switched off, and there's this level of mastery where you're you're having to focus every effort to just do the basics. And my thought was it's sort of halfway between those two you you can yeah natural and instinctive muscle memory but your brain is focusing 100 percent on what's the goal that i'm trying to achieve or or the the sort of um the the process and the routine rather than the individual tasks so that's where i was coming from anyway uh, okay that's better than nothing in terms of a set of struts let's attach da, 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 da. there we go and that has now duplicated onto that one which is cool so let's reposition that a bit so what are you working on Gossamer you're a musician too I believe I mean, everything like you. <laughs> Jack of all trades, master of none is the, the sort of situation I found myself in. And it's not done me too bad as life's gone on. Actually doing research on ambient channels. Aha. Uh -huh. Ambient channels as in ambient channels on YouTube or, or something else have I mis misunderstood? Yeah. Okay, I'd be keen to hear what kind of findings you've made. There's there's a few that I've I've sort of looked at. Um, you're a better writer. Uh, your attempt to find an honourable passive income. Yeah, that that would be nice. <laughs> My, um, one of my favorite ambient channels is, uh, is called the Guild of Ambience. In fact, I'll, I'll pull it up now. Um, it's, it's not so much ambient music as, as ambient kind of like soundscapes. And it's awesome for focus work, I found. Uh, so... This one here. This is really cool stuff. Uh, so if I I'll just pause my soundtrack playback there. I quite like this kind of stuff to work to. Oh, not videos. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> um, yeah, Guild of Ambience. Um, check it out if if you want something to work to it it's like uh really nice sort of 3d visuals of of uh, things like haunted houses and stuff and there's uh like water dripping and there's rainstorms and uh, howling winds and things and i i just find that level of of sort of non-intrusive noise is is really cool for for helping me focus i need to get youtube um 
premium so I don't get ads, but there we go. Yeah, I'm hearing lots of drone, which is a thing. Then there is a couple where the music is like, what? <laughs> yeah. Amb ambient is such a big catch-all term now. You can find amazing stuff and you can find absolute dross, but I guess that's like any genre. Uh, I want to put a couple of like portholes in here. And this is a process that I'm not good at, but I will show you how I do it. So I want a circle, but I want it to be, let's maybe try two steps and then So we do okay. Right, so that is going to form a guide. Um, Gossamer says, "I think to add to the equation, I want to go Einstein baby as focus music." Oh, I don't understand uh, negative modeling. There. This is where my multitasking is not working. I'm, I'm trying to concentrate on this and think about what you're trying to say, and I'm making a mess of both. So let me just get this um, porthole planned, and then you can you can elaborate if you'd like, and I will try and figure out what you're saying in a sec. So I want to put that there. I want to connect that. Yes, there, okay. What we do then, so we're gonna cut into this cylinder using this as a guide. So we do, That's not good. That was close, but no cigar. Okay, now I can delete that circle. No. So now we've got that there. And then we can take these polygons and get rid of them. Uh, okay, so a lot of people use an object in the shape they want, then use it as a takeaway on negative modeling. Yes, um, bo Boolean modeling. Yeah, you're quite right. That That's a very... No, I haven't... I have deleted a couple of faces there. I need to put those back later. Um, yeah, boole Boolean modeling is very good. It requires a lot of cleanup afterwards if you're using the sort of technique that I'm doing called half hard surface modeling. Uh, so... I'll give you an example, if, in case you're interested. So with this object here, the actual geometry looks like that. And then you apply modifiers to expand it. And then this turbo smooth here, that sort of adds more vertices and smooths everything out and sort of shapes everything. So if you, if you do that with, let's say, um, a cube and then a uh, a cylinder and you like take the cylinder away from the cube it screws up the the faces that are left and and leaves everything with like really dirty geometry it looks okay on the surface but then you apply something like that turbo smooth modifier here to get all the extra detail and everything just goes to to uh, to shit so that's that's why the the sort of technique that i'm using is in this instance, better because it, it leaves you with cleaner geometry afterwards. So, hopefully. <laughs> uh, so I need to target well that to here. I, as I say, I am not great at this. There, there'll be other people that will look at what I'm doing and uh, they'll cringe because it, it's a bit messy what I'm doing. In fact, stuff like this, there, there's probably a lot cleaner ways of having done what I've done. So let's tie those together. And uh, 
So kind of the next step is to connect these vertices across somehow. So we do cut that to there. The Einstein baby thing was when we made our babies listen to Mozart in hopes that they would be geniuses. Yeah, that, that's a little bit like the, I'm going to listen to um, Spanish classes on my iPod as I go to sleep. <laughs> Don't think anybody's ever learned Spanish that way, but I could be wrong. This is going to be a mess. So that's, I'm looking for quads and triangles. I'm going to have to clean this up properly afterwards. Let's take that border and extrude it down and extrude it down again. This is going to look shit to start with. Uh, could have been worse. Uh, yeah, it's pinching quite a lot. So I'm going to have to clean up the way that lot works. Mm, I had to be honest about the fact my music is rather complex, ADHD and such. So I'm finding me in the niche I want to be in. I also find AI still images boring. Uh, there, there's some AI work I've seen that's really, really good, in my opinion. Um, but it's, it's such a fashionable thing to be doing in some circles now that I can, I can see that. Um, and there's there's probably going to be a proportion of people that are just just churning images out because it's easy rather than because there's a particular point to it for them. Um, maybe I fall into that category. I, I'm trying to use AI images as a, a starting point for other things. Yeah, fashionable greats on my nerves personally. Yeah, eh, I can I can totally get that. I I often find. If there's a new trend out there, then I'll I'll be interested by it and intrigued by it. And then I'll see if there's a way that I can make it slightly different um, and make it my own. But what that tends to mean is that I end up getting so wrapped up in making it different that I don't necessarily always make it good. <laughs> This is a lot of fiddling about. Um, admittedly excited about the video aspect. Yeah, it's it, this. This is all so in its infancy now. I think still, um, it will be really cool to see what happens in the next sort of, let's say, five years. Maybe rendering three D video is just horrific. Uh do you mean um, taking taking things like this and then making 3D animations out of it? Because the the way I think that's kind of... Uh, well, yeah, the, okay, so we're on the same path. The, the development of this to 3D video has been sort of sped up so much with things like Unreal Engine because that's that's why I'm producing this is to stick it into Unreal Engine because that is that's like a game changer from where I learned how how this could be turned into video if you like because it trying to use the animation tools in here to then render individual frames uh that's that's a massive time uh investment whereas something like Unreal Engine you you kind of bring all your stuff in and you build it in a certain way and then you could just move it all in real time and record that movement that's that's a huge sort of step forward compared to what I originally learned all this stuff for um okay I'm going to try and clean this up while I'm talking 
You come from Poser, View Desperate, Blender, Arjo. Yeah, um, I, I was saying a little bit earlier on Blender. I I haven't used because because I got so used to using this package, I could never force myself to learn Blender um, uh, to this point because I kind of feel like I I know how to do enough in this that every time I pick up Blender, I'd be like so frustrated that I can't even do the basics. It's 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 not just learning something new. It's taking a step back. Would is how it would feel. Um, with am I doing the right thing there? Uh, the good thing is though, if if you know Blender, you can import stuff directly into Unreal Engine with Blender. So, I w I would never suggest to anybody nowadays to go and learn the package that I'm using now. Um, because it's, it's just redundant unless you have to use it f for compatibility with other people's stuff. This is uh, 3D Studio Max was was amazing like 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. And it was like one of the industry standard packages for good reason, because there was nothing else like it uh, except maybe Maya. And Autodesk bought both Maya and 3D Studio and then sat on both of them and haven't developed e either of them to any level. Uh, Wabbit knows how to use the blender in his kitchen. Psh, good skill. Kitchen, apparently th apparently that's where you open the wine. Uh, that's my knowledge of the kitchen. Mm. I think I've thoroughly messed that up. Let's Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's pinched to hell. Okay. I Again, I'm not great at this kind of stuff. But that will probably do for what I'm trying to do. Kitchen equals the location of coffee. Yep. True dat. Speaking of which. Um, so we've got a very janky looking porthole. Uh, I will probably try and put some surface detail on rather than cutting into that any further now. Uh, let's do some like rib sections along there. Chamfer. Edges. If you build like a band aid looking piece, you could reuse it later, and the band aid would facilitate potholes, launch beds, etc. Yeah, like a um, a steel plate that's welded on or, or um, riveted on, that could be good. Um, th you're quite right. I mean, like kit bashing or, or building a set of parts to kit bash with uh, is definitely a good, good step. Uh, I want to extrude. No, nope. I want to extrude local. In fact, that's a really good idea, Gossamer. Let's do that now. So let's take uh, I will create a box to start with. I'll create a couple of rivets on it. Let's do Sphere. Okay, yep, see you in a bit, we've got some uh we'll make that a hemisphere. Maybe we do A 
and we'll do six rivets on it. So let's do as a editable poly. Attach those. Okay. We could maybe ding this up a little bit, make it look a bit damaged. Let's cut into that a bit. Bridge that. Bridge that. Do -do. Okay, so if we then smooth that a lot, it looks like shit until we add control vertices. Um, Let's get in there. So this is just like tightening up the the corners and stuff. See what I'm doing. I think I need to cut that from there to there. Top there. Da, 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 da. There we go. That'll look all right. And then what we can do, because that's all one piece. We should be able to bend that if we want to around something like that cylindrical bit. Hey, Paul. Hope you're doing all right. Thanks for joining us. We are making a space station just because we can. And let's see if we can bend this. Um, modify this. Got it 
it's so long since I've used this. Gotta remember which axis I'm using, that's the one. So yeah, this is the sort of thing that I can apply to any part of this. If I just like take a a feature like this um, plate here and then just apply it to any part of the model in the end. As long as I actually get my axes right, but there we go. Don't want my little snap on. There we go. And this is the thing that I always forget is give it a name. There we go. So we could use another one of those somewhere else just to illustrate the point. Scalable, reusable, excellent. Yeah, it's uh, that. That's the way to do this kind of stuff. Is you, you build a like a kit of parts and then kind of like um, uh, kit bash. So that my solar panel here is reused here, and I did a couple of other ones just as placeholders. But I could quite easily take the same bit and reuse it over there. Same with the nose cone there. I could use it here instead. Um, th this is all just like thrown together as a, um, a mock-up based on the the um, stable diffusion diffusion image that I got. So that's kind of where I was going with it. I sort of want to come up with another thing like that. Any ideas? Um, I could do like a a control panel or a. Um, some kind of lever or or ent entry um, control uh, door door sort of hatch control maybe I've got my handles there grab handles in fact we could use a few grab handles along the side so it's like almost like a ladder let's take one of those then uh, so we can duplicate that and then detach it. Uh, wrong. What about a camera cage type bit that can facilitate exten extensional modules or equipment dishes? That's a good idea. Um, yeah, or, or some sort of uh, pylon system so that it could hold radar dishes and... Um, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, so let's take center to object. That's got very screwed up in terms of the axes. Uh, bye -bye. Let's do align to world. And object only. This is where, as Wabbit was saying, how accurate do you have to be with 3D? And the answer is as accurate as you want to be, which in my case with this project is I don't care about accuracy. It's just visuals. It's just if it looks good, then it's right. Uh, so let's do... If it sounds good, it's good. That's that's often been my approach to stuff, particularly with um, sort of music online that I'm producing. It's like there are certain rules for 
for music production and understanding your your sort of how you set a compressor and things like that i'm sure but i've never had the i've never had the discipline to go off and learn what the rules are and the times where i've tried to get close to that i've not always had like the most musical results so uh with your channel having variety the system i came up with was since i write music and draw was to have a color swatch in the corner to denote in the thumbnail the content type the banner image that's a really good idea that's a really good idea color code for a topic uh so let's bring that pivot to roughly there Do instance, let's say twenty five. There we go. Maybe that's too many. Go with twelve. That looks a bit better. I say we have enough rules in what I call the biggest scam, although adulting. I do not want rules in my hobby. That's that's fair. Definitely that's fair. I I, th I think there's, th this is what I sort of ranted about, if you like, or, or went on a, about at length in uh, my video a little while ago about um, the the two years that I've spent on YouTube, I, I've learned a couple of things which I felt were were really important, and that is to know what the reason is that you're doing stuff. If you are, if you're starting a YouTube channel because you want to make money and it's a business and you're providing a certain amount of value to people for every video, then you can't just do whatever the hell you want because the value then is for you. You're, you're producing stuff for your own desires and for your own satisfaction. If you're producing something that is purely entertainment for yourself and it might be interesting for other people, which is um, a perfectly valid solution as well, then that's another another approach. But you've got to know which it is that you're doing. You, ca you can't sort of say, hey, I'm going to produce a really successful commercial channel and then do what I do, which is create a completely different style of video every time and a, a completely different topic just as, as your whim takes you. So that's my view on it anyway. And it, I, I think I think the logic's there. Um, hey, Jason's here. Pardon your intrusion. You, uh, you didn't intrude on anything. Not to the best of my knowledge anyway. Uh... I'm not showing my 3D screen at this moment, so I've pressed the wrong button. One second. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I've lost my controls. Here we go. There we go, back to that. Um, Gosmer says that color swatch can easily be adapted by a slight variation. Teardrop, ribbon, etc. The banner image would have each color and icon denoting type of content, music, note, paintbrush, etc. That's, yeah, yeah, certainly. That could certainly work. Uh, let's do Turbo Smooth on that. So we have wrongs on our command module I think I'm hitting the end of my ability to focus on this for the moment so I'm going to hit save there we're, we're making some progress the generally the denser the mesh the more I feel like I've done something <laughs> but there we go so we've got a we've got a steel patch on there to cover up any holes oh, we've got some rungs we've got some antennae uh, we've got a thing, whatever that is. I don't know. Maybe that's an um, explosive charge. Uh, who knows? Um, it's coming together. So, And then 
obviously with in a perspective view you can you can get a more cinematic look at that so that's where we're at with the the space station for the moment i think i might have a play on my music gear artist and success is a good conversation that needs to be revisited there is value in that i i think you're dead right i think yeah the the way i'd probably summarize it in my own mind is you just have to know yourself and be true to yourself and i think that's why there's been this sort of slight push towards people um being more genuine on youtube or or people at least saying they're being more genuine because you're you're sort of creators that are following the trends following the the meta um it it it's only interesting for the first couple of times when you see 15 ways to improve your productivity and uh, the the first two or three videos that you watch they're they're interesting and then after that you you find the same things coming up and up again and it it all comes across as a little bit like uh copy paste um so if you're if you if you're trend chasing that that doesn't feel genuine in the slightest um you you've you've just got to do what you feel like if i see another how to vangelis i'm a scream <laughs> yeah I, I i must admit how to vangelis is great as long as you then go right now that i understand how vangelis did a lot of his stuff how do I do Mike Renoff? Because that's me. I'm not Vangelis. I'm, I might learn what Vangelis did to get ideas or to understand technique, but then how do I then explore that and develop it further? That that's that's always going to be the the better way to take it, in my opinion. I I I did copy other people's techniques and music, and still do. Um, my one of my favorite artists technique wise and and sort of sound wise is uh speedy j hey see you wabbit thanks for stopping in nice nice to chat to you and uh i'll i'll see you again soon i hope um yeah speedy j uh his real name is Jochen pup uh he's an amazing techno artist and i listen to a lot of his live sets and probably if you're really keen on his stuff you'll know that i've ripped off a lot of the the sort of fills that he does when i do my live live music uh i've always summed it up everyone who is alive is an artist based on the old does art imitate life or yeah ev everyone has the capacity for creating art and in doing anything you can look at it as art i think i, I don't believe that there's there's a threshold at which you have to be in order to classify anything particularly as art it's like if you feel like you're creating something um or if you're doing something creative then there is some creative merit in it that's that's my view um i i i do love the the fact that youtube has given people like me and and a lot of you guys opportunities to express that and to share it because it's one thing to to sort of make your own stuff and it and to to take it to a certain level and be proud of it and maybe show it to friends and family but it's a it, it feels to me like a game changer when you can put it out there for um 10 20 30 500 10 000 people to see and not just have that opportunity but also have the opportunity for feedback and get get the opportunity to learn more about what what other people like from it and and don't like from it um there, there's always going to be the occasion where i put put a piece of music out and it, it flops because maybe it wasn't that good i wouldn't have known whether it was good or not before jamie hello nice to see you yeah validation is a really important part of it definitely um I have seen a few comments from people saying, oh, I just make music for myself and I post it on my YouTube channel. Yeah, that makes sense. But by posting it on your YouTube channel, 
you you can't really then say it's just for you not not in my eyes anyway because why does it need to be out in front of the rest of the world if it is just for you if it, it's one thing to say you did it to follow your own ideas and and to express yourself for you but by putting it out in front of other people you you've got to expect that there's some kind of feedback um yeah and that, yeah there's nothing wrong with that um I, i'm not criticizing people who do that i'm just sort of saying by putting it out there you can't then say to other people no don't comment on it uh, it's just for me um but the opportunities that it offers just weren't there when i was in my teens and i first started messing with music um that was it was it was really kind of frustrating to create bits of music put them on audio cassette and then have like maybe two of my friends out of 10 or 15 people that i was kind of hanging out with who said oh yeah i'll give that a listen everybody else was like no nah, you're okay <laughs> um and then the one or two people who did listen to it kind of went yeah it's all right and because they were just being kind or because it was just all right and now the there's the whole world that is oh, a good proportion of the world is on youtube or bandcamp or whatever other social media the fact that you can reach an audience like that is just amazing to me i i still i still get sort of really pleased that that opportunity is there um mizor nice to sp nice to see you thanks for st stopping in uh, i don't think i've seen your name before so uh welcome and thank you for joining us you got to know yourself uh, is still ringing in my head haha <laughs> something we think about every day yeah i, I think that's that's got to be key in my experience, uh, whether it be music, my social life, my work, it, the more I know about myself, the better equipped I am to relate to other people. Uh, I, I watched, I tell you what, this is a uh, high recommendation is a video that came out, uh, I think today or yesterday from Veritasium on YouTube. Uh, and it's about game theory. It talks about the prisoner's dilemma. And the thumbnail of it is very apt because it, it's a comment that somebody's left which says, this video should be watched by everybody. And I, I completely agree. It's all about um, game theory in society and the fact that there are certain strategies that you would think are perhaps not great, like... Um, being kind, being forgiving, and scientifically proven in game theory is to be kind and to be forgiving, but don't be a pushover. And the more you can know about yourself and, and sort of take that mindset, in my experience, of, of sort of giving, giving, and then when somebody screws you over, you make sure that they know that you know, and you push back on it, and then things tend to settle out a little bit a lot of the time, it seems. So, um, yeah, I'll put a link in the description to the uh, the stream. Um, Veritasium. Uh, Mizor, yeah. Hi. Stumbled onto you while uploading. Veritasium is great. Yeah, Veritasium's cool. Um, I'd call that tolerance without tyranny. Yes. And just not being a pushover but being kind definitely uh jamie says uh social media has changed everything for good or bad totally totally agree uh, i think it is for good and for bad there, there's there's sort of two sides to the coin isn't there um the the ability to to have an audience or to to gain an audience the ability to test ideas so quickly whereas uh, i mean if you're looking at things from a commercial point of view if you're if you're writing a book let's say traditionally you'd have to um write a few chapters take it to a publisher have the publisher read it and say oh, i think there's some promise in that go off and write and the next couple of chapters and then we'll talk about a book deal you're talking weeks you're talking months you're talking one or two people maybe who will be the gatekeepers to whether that book goes any further or not nowadays you write it online 
and as you're writing a chapter you publish it you get people interested in it they post comments they post feedback you then either adjust that chapter or you write your next one developing it further yeah and hundreds of rejections yeah um just just the ability to test quickly and to iterate um with an audience is amazing and the thing that i've learned and i would encourage other people to take on board if they are looking at either developing their own channel or their own product or their own whatever it might be is test and then build don't just like build something and then see if you can find an audience build and oh sorry test ideas out and as you're doing it put those out into the world and and sort of get feedback and get your audience based on uh, the work you are doing now and then by the time you've got your finished product or your finished uh, album or your finished uh, article you've already got a, an audience for it through that work so i've been nattering enough <laughs> uh how long have we been going here Seven thirty-nine. i need to call a halt i think um thank you very much for joining me folks it's been uh a nice nice reintroduction for me to to streaming i will do more soon uh oh jamie says my husband and i create music but make more time for our children and just go outside to breathe and share love to our neighbors superb can't can't say any any further than that i i hope i manage similar balance in life i think by um by taking time to do this i feel refreshed then i can go and spend time with the family feeling like i've done that bit of expression that i need to and and uh put myself out there in the world then i can be ready for them and and be there for them so um, yeah, love you too, guys. I will see you soon. I'll put more posts out. Um, my next step is to do another jam and put that up. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you all soon. So take care. Thank you very much.